Hello everyone. In this video series, I'd like to talk about SAP Open Connectors and how you can build your own Open Connector uh, to retrieve healthcare information from Epic Fire Sandbox systems. Uh, but first in this session, I'd like to show you how SAP Open Connectors work. Uh, SAP Open Connectors, if you don't know about it, it is a service that runs within SAP BTP. And a majority of SAP customers, uh, they operate in a hybrid environment. And when I mention hybrid environment, environment, I'm talking about SAP and non-SAP products within their organization. Uh, so it kind of becomes important that there is a harmonized way of communicating with these non-SAP products from within SAP. Uh, so in this case, uh, within SAP BTP, uh, you want a harmonized way of communicating with these non-SAP products. Uh, most non-SAP products, they offer some APIs that you can directly communicate with. Uh, but really what we want is a harmonized way of communicating with these non-SAP uh, products. Uh, so like I mentioned, uh, the third party uh, uh, apps, they provide APIs that you can directly communicate with, uh, but integration is different. Uh, so there are these common uh, operations or uh, uh, actions that you want to perform like authentication, error handling, uh, mapping and transformation, events and polling. Uh, so this is where SAP Open Connectors come into play. So it bridges the gap. It makes the integration with non-SAP products so much more easier. Okay, so in a nutshell, uh, what SAP Open Connector does is it simplifies connectivity to third-party apps or non-SAP products. Uh, we have more than 250 pre-built connectors uh, to non-SAP cloud applications. Uh, so you can communicate with Google Drive, OneDrive, and so on. And like I mentioned, the advantage of using SAP Open Connectors uh, is that it provides a harmonized experience. Uh, so let's quickly jump into SAP uh, uh, Open Connectors and see how this thing works. Uh, so if I go into this connectors tab right here, uh, you see I have about uh, uh, qu quite a few connectors to connect to non-SAP products. Um, now, all the responses when you connect to these non-SAP products, um, the responses come back in JSON. And there is a single way of authenticating against these uh, non-SAP products. Uh, and all these uh, calls are harmonized, so you can create your own uh, resource as well. Uh, we'll look at it uh, in, a, a sh in a little while. Uh, and you can also, like if you go into the formulas, you can create your own workflow based on your product requirement. Uh, so basically what you can do is you can take your complex application logic and actually push it into the SAP Open Connectors. Okay, so let's uh, jump right in. Um, now here, let me search for Google Drive. Um, so if I search for Google Drive, uh, so uh, there is a connector for SAP, uh, Google Drive. Now, if you notice at the bottom, there is this uh, uh, small, uh, um, there is this uh, document, it says documents. So this belongs to the hub uh, named documents. Uh, so what that means is if I search for documents, all related documents, uh, all related connectors for the documents hub, uh, they're all uh, listed here. Uh, so you see OneDrive, uh, you see Dropbox, you have uh, OneNote, you have a Amazon S3. Now what SAP Open Connectors does is uh, for you to connect to any of these uh, uh, connectors within this documents hub, uh, there is a single way of connecting to it. Uh, so that's what I mean by a harmonized way. Uh, so let's quickly jump and create a new connector. So what I'm going to do is, uh, uh, where is the Google Drive here? So I go to Google Drive and I choose authenticate. Uh, so when I say authenticate, uh, it's going to create me a new instance. Uh, now, an instance is nothing but a authorized or an authenticated uh, uh, connector. So let me call this Milton Google Drive. And when I say create instance, uh, if I'm not logged in already, uh, it's going to take me to this OAuth flow with Google. Uh, so I can search and I can select uh, uh, that to allow it. And you will notice that it says Cloud Elements uh, V2, so that's fine. Uh, so SAP uh, uses uh, this third part, like uh, we've, uh, uh, Cloud Elements provides this service for us. Uh, so say allow. And now what it has done is it will create this instance, uh, which is an authenticated uh, uh, 
connector uh, for Google Drive. Uh, so now I can test these APIs. So if I go into those instances, uh, you will see that I have the Milton Google Drive and you here I have the API docs. So if I click on API docs, uh, I can go ahead and uh, run any of these methods. Now, because Google Drive belongs to this hub, uh, documents hub, uh, if you had uh, uh, created an instance of OneDrive, uh, you will have similar resources here as well. Uh, so let's say I want to post a file to my Google Drive. Uh, so I can click Post Files. And this would be the same for uh, if you were doing it with uh, uh, OneDrive as well because they belong to the same Documents Hub. Uh, so here there is a single way of connecting for authorization. Uh, so there is a string where it has the element user and organization string here. Uh, and this allows you to have authorization with this uh, Google connector. Uh, so let's uh, try it out. Uh, so what I can do is uh, I can go ahead and browse a file. Uh, so if I click a browse file uh, and from my downloads folder, I can say sample Google TXT. Uh, and here I can give the path. I can call it a sample uh, Google dot TXT. Uh, and then I can execute this. Uh, and this will post a file to my Google Drive. Uh, so if I open up uh, my Google Drive here, uh, I should be able to see uh, this new file that got posted. So if I go into my Google Drive, I should see this uh, new file that got posted. Uh, so let me sign in. And similarly, if I did the same, th so I should see sample google.txt that I just posted right here. Uh, now, if I go back to my connector right here, uh, now uh, if I go into my connectors here and let me search for documents again, so I have uh, OneDrive. Uh, let me authenticate against OneDrive as well. Uh, so I'll call this Milton OneDrive. Uh, create an instance. And like I said, an instance is an authenticated connector. Uh, so you have to provide, uh, so I'm already logged in, so, it, uh, uh, so the OAuth flow went through. Uh, so if I go into my instances, uh, you will see that there is a Milton OneDrive. Uh, and here, if I go into my API docs, uh, I can post a file here as well. And look, uh, the signature is uh, the same, and you have the same kind of uh, authorization string. Uh, so let's so try it out here. Uh, so the path, I'll call this uh, sample, uh, sample OneDrive. .txt. And I can go ahead and browse this file right here. And once I execute this, uh, I should see the file in my OneDrive as well. Um, so you see it's a, a harmonized way of uh, connecting with any of the third-party vendors uh, that are related. So in this case, uh, the hub is the documents, and they all have a similar way of uh, uh, connecting. Uh, so this makes uh, integration so much easier. Um, and then uh, within your app and from within, um, let's say, API and SAP Open Connectors, uh, it plays very well with API management uh, or you can use uh, Fiori apps or you can use uh, workflow services or mobile services and you can consume these, uh, uh, these new APIs that you've built. Uh, so there is a single way of uh, connecting to any of these related third-party vendors. Now, if you go to this uh, common resources here, you can create your own common resources as well. Uh, so let's say I go into my connectors here uh, and I'm looking for GitHub. Uh, so if I go into GitHub, uh, so I've already created a uh, instance. So you can see that it says one, uh, which means that I've already created an instance of my GitHub. Uh, so let me just quickly go through the process of creating a GitHub uh, instance as well. Uh, once you click authenticate, uh, you can give a name. 
and you can give an organization and a repository. So I've uh, created a, a sample organization. I created a repository within that organization and I already created this instance. So I'm not going to go through this that, that process again. Um, so here I have my GitHub uh, instance, which is already authenticated. Uh, but let me go ahead and authenticate uh, just one more time, uh, just so that uh, we are uh, uh, just so that I show you the OAuth flow. Uh, so like I said, Cloud Elements provides this service. So that's why you see the word Cloud Element. Uh, so I am authenticated now with GitHub. Uh, and if I go into my API docs, um, so this is going to bring back all the resources for GitHub and any anything in this uh, within this hub. Uh, so I'm not exactly sure what hub uh, uh, GitHub belongs to, but uh, all of them will have similar resources. Uh, so if I go into get branches, uh, so it's going to get all the branches for my organization and for my repository. Uh, so if I try it out, uh, so I can say execute, and even the pagination and everything is very harmonized. So it's a single way of doing it. Uh, so that's why it makes it so much easier to consume it from within your app. Uh, so if I click execute, um, it's uh, gone and got my branches. It's main, branch one, branch two. So this is just a sample organization and repository that I have. Now you see that um, uh, this is kind of, a, it's not a flat structure. So there is a name and then there is an object inside of it called commit. Um, but let's say like uh, you are this structure is much more complex than this. Um, uh, here it is fairly straightforward, but let's say uh, the response, uh, uh, the JSON response is much more complicated than this. Uh, but the application that you're trying to build uh, needs a flat structure and needs a very s simple structure. Uh, so that's where you have this common resources that come into play. Uh, so what you can do is you can create your own custom, uh, you can create your own uh, custom resource. Uh, so let me show you how I've created this custom branch. Uh, so here I've, uh, let me actually go through the process of creating a new brand, uh, common resource. Uh, so I can say build new, and with this I can, uh, I can choose start without template. Uh, so I say continue, and let's say I call this uh, uh, my branches. Uh, so since custom branches is already taken. Uh, so this would be the new resource uh, that you want to create. Uh, so in this case, I'm just calling it my branches. Uh, so let's go ahead and create this uh, common resource. Uh, now, um, I just want just a couple of fields because my application only needs a couple of fields. Uh, so I want this API to cater to my app uh, just like what my app needs. Uh, so instead of that complex structure, I'm just going to go with name and URL. And this is all my app needs. Of course, your requirements may be different and you can take a much more complex structure and create it into a simpler structure for yourself or whatever your application needs. So let me go ahead and save this. Name and URL is all I'm interested in. And I need to tell where to get this from. So I say a transformation. Uh, so I want to get this from this uh, GitHub and then uh, I say next and the branches is what I'm interested in. Uh, I'm going to transform these two things. Now branches of course is, uh, has this complex structure, uh, but I, I just want the name field. Uh, so you can see that it tells the vendor field names. So it knows that the vendor is already returning name. Uh, and then uh, I want the URL. And here in this case, uh, the URL is, uh, is like a, uh, um, is a uh, complex structure. So commit.url is what I want. Uh, so I'm going to say this, and then I'm going to save this. So what we've done is uh, we've created this uh, new my branches, uh, which gives us a much more simplified way. And then now your application can actually consume this. So if I say try it out, uh, I can say get and I can say execute. And this is going to be part of my uh, GitHub instance. And you can see I get the same data, but this time it's more specific to the product that I'm building. 
Okay, uh, so that is uh, as far as common resources are concerned. Uh, now you can also have formulas here as well. Now formulas, uh, what it does is um, uh, if you have some kind of complex application logic, you can actually push it down to your SAP open connectors. Uh, for example, let's say if my OneDrive, if, uh, some, if a new file is added to my OneDrive, uh, then I want to do operation one, two, three, four. Let's say we have uh, quite a few things that we want to do. Uh, so you can try and build that within your application, uh, but there's a much simpler way of doing it. Uh, so what I can do is I can go into my instances right here, and I've already have a micro, uh, OneDrive instance right here. Uh, so let me go ahead and edit this instance. Uh, and right now I'm looking for an event. Uh, so I'm going to simply turn this on. Um, so uh, right now what I'm I'm interested is in monitoring this uh, OneDrive for events. Now there are two types of events, uh, polling and also through webhook. Uh, you can see here that eventing through webhook is not supported for OneDrive, uh, whereas if you used uh, GitHub, uh, you can do eventing through webhook. Uh, but in this case, uh, you do the polling. Uh, and that's all we have to do. Um, but uh, there's one other thing I'm going to do anyways is I'm, I don't want to wait five minutes. Uh, so I'm going to bring this uh, slider back to one minute. Uh, so every one minute, it's going to pull my OneDrive. And if any event happens, uh, then it's going to inform me. So I'm going to say select all resources and uh, the changes is what I want. Any changes in my OneDrive, uh, every one minute it's going to pull and let me know. Uh, so I'm going to update my instance with this uh, new uh, new modification. Um, so now in my formulas, uh, what I can do is I can create a new formula, uh, build a new formula. Now the formula itself uh, is like a template. Uh, so, um, so let's say at the later stage you want to uh, you want to replace OneDrive with Google Drive, uh, then it's uh, so much easier. So we just create a variable for the instance that we want to use. And basically, if you change out, if you change out that variable, uh, then now instead of OneDrive, you'll be using Google Drive. Uh, so I'll call this Milton formula. Uh, and the first thing I want to do is uh, create this variable. Uh, so this variable is going to point uh, right now, I'm going to point it to my OneDrive. Uh, so when you try it out, you'll have to specify where that variable is uh, pointing to. Uh, but later on, if you do want to change it to Google Drive, uh, like I said, all you have to do is uh, uh, change the variable value to the Google Drive, and then this whole trigger will be working against Google Drive. Uh, so here I can go in. Uh, so there's like a couple of ways in which uh, this can be triggered. Uh, right now, this is the manual way of uh, uh, triggering this workflow or this uh, formula. I'm going to delete this. Uh, what I want to do is uh, I want to trigger it based on the event. Uh, so here I'm going to say event trigger. Uh, I don't have an instance variable, so I'm going to call this uh, uh, my document instance. I'm going to even name it differently uh, because this way my document instance later at a later stage, I can point it to the Google Drive. Uh, you want to make sure that it uh, points to connector instance, uh, save. So at this moment, my document instance is, uh, I mean, uh, when you run it, you have to specify where it points to. Uh, right now it doesn't point to anything. Uh, so you have the my document instance. So anytime this event happens, uh, this trigger will happen. Uh, so I can add a step. Uh, so let's say I want to make a few calls uh, if this thing happens. Uh, let's say I want to get uh, a user info, I get user info or something. Uh, you can do whatever you want here. Um, you, you can have a complex logic here, but I'm just going to show you uh, just the gist of it. So say get and then the connector resource. I know that the document uh, uh, the document hub, uh, they have a, a slash me resource, uh, which uh, brings, which gives you the authenticated users information. So I'm just going to do this. Uh, I mean, this has no, uh, no practical purpose at all, uh, but just for uh, illustration purpose. Uh, so anytime there is a change in the OneDrive, uh, I make a call to slash user. And again, you can 
add anything about so at the success you can add another step and so on uh, so you can add multiple steps so you can have like a complex structure with uh, what happens if it fails what happens if it succeeds so you, you, basically you are pushing your application logic into this uh, right here and if I want to try it out uh, so I just click try it out and like I said uh, it's going to ask me uh, what is my formula instance uh, so let me actually let me do it this way so once I've done this uh, so I can go into my uh, uh, Milton formula right here first I have to create an instance and when I create this instance is where I have to say uh, let me call this Milton one drive formula instance and here I can select that my formula is going to be against this Milton one drive and then I can create this instance and then I can run it um, now again like I said if I go into this formulas here uh, I can go ahead and say create instance uh, and this time I can say Milton uh, Google drive formula instance and then here I can select the uh, Google Drive uh, but this instance we didn't uh, select uh, we didn't we need to change this to uh, we need to add the eventing here um, but I haven't done this but once you do the uh, once you modify this instance this should also work uh, so now we uh, so we created a single formula but this can work against any of these uh, uh, any of these connector instances okay so that's a quick uh, uh, overview of SAP open connectors uh, so in the next session I'll be talking about uh, epic healthcare systems thank you